This is open source intelligence gone wild and how I found drug traffickers and narco terrorists online. So here's a brief agenda of today's session. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, how I discovered narco terrorism and its connection to narco trafficking, open source intelligence tools that I use to discover the narco terrorists and narco traffickers, give you two case studies, and then we'll have time for questions and answers. So who are my guys? My name is Skylar Davis, but everyone knows me as Sky. I'm a open source intelligence analyst. I have volunteered with various organizations to identify uh, victims of sex trafficking. And I've recently been working on the side with law enforcement to uh, provide them with open source training and identifying drug traffickers. I'm also a computer science teacher and IT coordinator. I teach kindergartner and first graders uh, how to code and different concepts of cybersecurity. And I'm a graduate student at Michigan State University. Now guys, before I continue my presentation, I wanna get a show of hands. Who here has heard of the term narco-terrorism before today? All right, so most of you understand what narco-terrorism is. For those of you that don't know what it is, guys, it's a term that was coined in the 1980s to describe drug traffickers who use terroristic methods and tactics to scare off anti-narcotic police officers. So by doing kidnappings, assassinations, and car bombs, they are able to scare the anti-narcotic police officers from stopping their investigations. And I recently discovered what narco-terrorism was a little over a year ago. I was doing a research paper on MS-13, and when reading one of the articles, the MS-13 member who was arrested was charged with narco-terrorism. And I never heard of it before, and this piqued my interest. So I started to do more research on it, and I found that, that narco-terrorism happens in the United States, and I also discovered that the definition of narco-terrorism should be updated because the current definitions of narco-terrorism talks about cartel members, but there are also gang members in the United States that are using narco-terrorism to scare off cops or even harm them as well. I also found out that narco-terrorism is linked to gun trafficking. So here's an example of narco-terrorism in the United States. In the 1990s, there was an officer who was killed by a car bomb. Also, where I'm from, New Jersey, there was a police officer who was shot in court because he was going to testify against a uh, narcotic trafficker. And recently, there was a detective who pulled over a suspect, and when he found illegal substances in this suspect's car, the suspect kidnapped him. So these are different examples of narco-terrorism happening in the United States. But in order for narco-terrorism to happen, narcotic trafficking have to happen. And I discovered that there's a lot of narcotic traffickers that are using Telegram to sell their drugs. And the reason being, Telegram has encrypted messaging and features such as turning off screen recording. So if you were to screenshot a message on Telegram, it doesn't appear on your phone. So you can screenshot it, but when you go back to look at the picture, nothing shows up. So this is how they're able to get away with what they're doing. But there are ways sometimes to collect evidence. For example, I logged into this channel on my computer and just took a picture with my phone from the computer. And as you can see, guys, um, and the picture on the right, it's uh, fentanyl. And we have a serious fentanyl epidemic in our country. Not only are adults dying, but young children are dying as well. And as you can see, guys, here's a menu where someone can order drugs as if they're at a fast food restaurant. Now, let me talk about open source intelligence very briefly. OSINT, guys, is just using publicly available information to find things out. And we've all used OSINT before. I used it before. I knew it would be called OSINT, guys. When I was in high school, um, one of my friends, he developed his crush on this girl. He wanted to find out who she was. So we, we was using OSINT to find out who she was. 
and I'm sure pretty, I'm pretty sure some of you have used OSINT before going on interviews or maybe even coming here to find out information about a speaker. I see some of you smiling and nodding your heads. Now these are different uh, open source intelligent resources such as uh, social media, reverse imaging, reverse phone numbers, arrest records, voting records, home addresses. Guys, if you look yourself up on Google right now, I guarantee you all this information will come up. Well, minus arrest records, but other things um, as well. Now, these are two tools that I use to discover these narcotic traffickers online, guys. PEMIs and passive reconnaissance. I love PEMIs, guys, because uh, it's based on facial recognition. And if you upload a picture of yourself or someone else, uh, it traces back different photos that the person has online. And passive reconnaissance, guys, it's information gathering. The person that you are researching doesn't know that you are doing uh, research on them. But I say be very careful. Create a sock puppet or a fake page when doing this. I accidentally liked the page once on my personal account and I had to lock it and change my username to something different, guys. So please be careful. Now here's the first case study, guys. If we don't know what fentanyl is, guys, it's a very deadly drug. Um, it's also known as deadly blue, but that's not a Crayola color. It is used in drugs to make the drug more potent and to stretch the drug. And it's also used in pills, as you can see on the left. And it's very hard to distinguish which is the real or fake drug. And again, guys, we have young adults dying from this drug because if they take the drug at a party, they don't really know what they're taking. And what I found was just that much fentanyl can kill someone. So here is how I discovered traffickers online. Using open source intelligence uh, on Twitter, guys, I typed in very intentional keywords such as join Telegram pills. And as you can see, uh, this person's account is advertising uh, counterfeit pills, marijuana, and other illegal substances. And as I continue to look through their page, I found something very interesting. You will see the person uploading a mailbox or envelope of the drugs that they're sending out, but the person also put a picture of themselves on the same page. I don't know why, but they did. And as I was going through it, once I identified who they were, guys, I put their picture on face ID check because, let me backtrack. PEMIS isn't always uh, accurate, guys. Sometimes you have to use other tools. And another facial recognition tool is Face ID Check. You have to pay for Face ID Check and PEMIS, guys. But if you screenshot it and put it into Google, it's free. There's ways around it. But uh, Face ID Check, guys, pulled up a picture of the individual. And in 2022, guys, uh, they were arrested with possession of marijuana and unlawful carry of a weapon. And uh, two years later, because this post, guys, is from this past summer, they're selling drugs and guns again. And as I said before, uh, narco trafficking, guys, is very connected to gun trafficking. And with the gun trafficking, it's not legal guns, it's illicit guns. And if you guys know anything about the illicit guns that are coming out now, they're converting pistols into machine guns with things called switches. So that's how I found the first narcotic trafficker using OSINT. Here, guys, is the second case study. Again, guys, I found this page on Twitter just by typing in different words connected with Telegram. And after finding it, I took the URL and I put it onto Twitter. And I noticed that multiple people were posting the same link. So then the light bulb went off in my head. Hmm, this is part of a large criminal organization. And as you can see, guys, they're selling guns and drugs. As I said before, narco trafficking and narco terrorism is also connected to gun trafficking. So the first person's page I found, I noticed their profile picture, but they were smart enough to hide their picture behind wads of money. And I thought, wow. A bad day, I'm not gonna catch them. I'm not gonna identify them. But 
somebody who else posted this link had a similar picture on their page and this person was showing their face. I uploaded it to PenMinds and I noticed that the individual was arrested uh, on, correct. Mm -hmm. I'm blacking out the faces, guys, correct. Now, um, I found um, an article about uh, three individuals who were arrested after running away from police officers after a uh, traffic stop and they were arrested for many different charges. And one thing that I noticed was with the gang paraphernalia is pink. I've never seen that before. Um, usually when it comes to gangs, the colors that stick out are red, uh, blue, yellow, green, et cetera, but never pink. And I took some of the names uh, from the members arrested and put them into Facebook. And this is what led me down the rabbit hole. The individual that was arrested is right here. He was a child in 2011 when he was a part of this gang. He's still a part of it. And that's when I knew I had some type of connection because around his neck is a pink bandana. Uh, I continued to do more research and I found out that he was a part of a large gang in Columbus, Georgia, who were flooding the streets with fentanyl. And not only are they flooding the streets with fentanyl, but they're also assaulting federal agents as well. The member of the gang who was assaulting a federal agent is known in the community for drug trafficking and causing a lot of violence. This is a current uh, update, guys, of um, an operation that was in Georgia. The gang that starts with the letter Z, guys, is the gang that's associated with the color pink. Is under the uh, gangs that you voted before. This gang was actually uh, taken down in September of 2024, a few months ago, for uh, multiple charges, Glock switches, firearms, as well as the drugs that you see here, fentanyl being one of them. And I realized, guys, that they're using technology to flood the streets with poison, but there's a way to combat that with open source intelligence. In the 80s and 90s, crack cocaine was flooding the streets, and the police officers used batter rams to knock down the drug dealers' houses. We no longer have batter rams, we now have open source intelligence and other tools to combat this. Uh, this is just a recap of what I spoke about today. Uh, open source intelligence is effective in helping identify narcotic traffickers on the dark web, guys. Open source intelligence can be used by civilians and law enforcement. So as us as the civilians, guys, we can use this information. And we can pass it along to the officers as well because it's anonymous. We don't have to go to court or anything. You just talk to a police officer, send them an email, and then they pick up where we did the bulk of the work. And um, Alyssa Goods are being advertised on social media. Uh, again, guys, my name is uh, Skylar Davis, and this is how I found drug traffickers and uh, narco terrorists online by using open source intelligence.